I'm Callie with Ag Aviation Adventures and today we're in Olney, Texas. We're at the Air Tractor Factory here. And we're really excited to take you along for a tour. We're going to see start to finish what this place entails. So today we're meeting with Jeff. He's right here to take us on a tour. Where are we going to start today? We're going to start in the well shop where the magic begins. Awesome. Let's do it. All right. Let's go. Ladies first. Thank you. So you would say that this is kind of where it all begins, is that correct? That's right, yeah. This is the first stage of the assembly for the fuselage frame. So this is where it all begins right here. The tube cutting laser over there, uh, all these tubes that you see cut here are cut to fit onto the fuselage frame. Tubes are pre-cut to a length, and then we have fitters and we have welders. And so the fitters will take those tubes, fit them into place in the fuselage frame grind them to fit as close as perfect as they can and then you have a welder that will come behind and tack them in place. We try to do all the welding that we can inside the fixture you see here um, and then it comes out of the fixture goes on these rotisseries where a, a welder can actually finish all the beads and all the joints and he can turn the frame around and get access to everything that he needs. Right so a lot of hands are touching this and also this is kind of crazy because we were in here earlier this morning and this fuselage was here and they've already taken it off of, of here and got it on their rotisserie and then they've right. started a new one. They've started a new one. They've already loaded the front section in as you can see here. This is the front section is built separately as a sub-assembly. Um, it's, it's heat treated and then so it loads in first then they start building the fuselage frame off of it just like you see here. The, the rest of the well shop wraps around here. If we want to walk down here real quick and look at the 802 frame we, yeah. can, we can do that. So Jeff, this is the same, but for the 802, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, so this is the 802 uh, fixture that we build the 802 fuselage frame in. Um, you, like I said, I think over there, earlier when we were here this morning, that, that frame was actually in that picture as well. So they just pulled it out, um, doing the final welds on it. Speaking of time and how quickly things are moving in here, even as we've seen just throughout the day, what's a time from this line all the way up to the front? It's, so this, the small assembly line is on a 22-hour line move. So every 22 hours, that, that fuselage frame that gets built, gets painted, and moves to the fuselage, and every 22 hours, that line is pushing it out the door. So in a, in a, from the time you cut tubing to the time an airplane pops out, the door is roughly four and a half weeks. Um, it's constantly, every 22 hours, basically an airplane coming out the front door. And even though these are divided into lines, there's a lot that goes into it while they're in these lines and we'll see more of that when we head over to that's other right. parts of the factory is yes, that correct that's right you know you'll see the other side of things like the back shops like the fab shop wing shop the control surface area you'll see all the things behind the scenes um, in the other plants you're right awesome. so this would be the first stage of fuselage this is where they fit all the side panels to the airplane the instrument panel the hopper gets fit here um, the paint straps actually get laid on the side of the plane once they get everything fit here uh, and then that, it'll keep moving down the line as we walk further down this way. You can see the different stages of fuselage. And something that was really interesting for us is that each panel is fit to each aircraft specifically. That's correct. They're yeah. unique to each aircraft. Each correct? aircraft. That's right. And we're working on uh, with you'll see down in the fab shop the new machinery and things we have. We're working on ways to better that process. Or someday, hopefully, we'll be have side panels that will take off of one airplane and bolt onto another. We've already done it in the 802. On the engine cow system, we proved that it can work, and so we're working our way on the smaller lines and, and working our way with the other panels as well. But right now, this is a lot of skill, like human skill, that goes into yes, putting these together. Yeah, these scans are all all fitted, sheared, formed to fit just right there. You're exactly right. A lot of, lot of hands on here. Still so mind blowing. This airplane will go it'll down leave, that hallway. It'll leave here, go down, go there, to paint, get taped up, painted, and come back up here. Yeah. Wow. And then you'll end up here in the first stage of, of final assembly. This is where the airplane gets put on the main landing gear. The tail gear gets put on here. They put the lower instrument panel in here. The engine gets built up here and installed here um, at, the, at this first stage. So the airplane leaves from here. It's up on the gear already and it moves to the second stage of final assembly there. So that is where the, tail, the wings will be installed, which is what they're doing now. Uh, they'll put the tail feathers on, ailerons flat, and as it moves to the final stage of the final assembly up there, which it, it'll go through an inspection process, and then out the door it goes to flight line. Just because it's rolling out this door doesn't mean it's ready to go to the consumer, is that correct? No, that's it not, still that, has some inspections to go through. That's right, yeah, there's there's multiple inspections that it goes through. Um, then the flight line crew takes it and they will 
rig it, they will set it up, the engine, set everything up on the engine. They will balance the propeller uh, and actually go put an hour, hour and a half on an airplane flying it around here. Okay. And then, then the airplane moves over to plant four, which we'll visit here shortly where it is stored until a dealer or customer comes and picks it up. And that's where they do the final cleaning and final touch-up processes over there as well. Awesome. We'll get to see that here in a little bit. Okay. So where we're headed next would be our e-coat line. Um, that's our new process that we have for the skins, the aluminum skins here at Air Tractor. It's a dip line and a dip process that you'll see when we get down there. Basically replaces all our priming process that we do uh, or used to do. And this is a fairly new thing for you all here at Air Tractor? We've been doing it since somewhere around 2017. We started the process and we're the only, only person in aerospace doing this process. That is wild. So what you see here is uh, shipping and receiving. This is where raw materials come in the back door of the FedEx truck, the UPS truck right here, drop all the boxes off. Is this actually the hallway that they will uh, yes, run airplanes through? Yeah, this is where the fuselage frame, like the 802s get welded up there, blasted up there, painted, and rolled down this hallway to the assembly line. So this is the eco process we were just talking about earlier. Um, the dip line, which we'll go in there and take a look at that here momentarily. It's quite a process trying to figure out how to rack all these individual parts and get as many parts as you can on a rack to, to go into the eco process. It is a really hard finish, durable finish compared to like just primer and a very efficient process as far as, as putting it on. We can go in there and take a look. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so this is our eco line. Um, this is where you saw them racking the parts outside. So the racks of parts would come in here picked up by its hoist and it starts the process. We can go upstairs here and take a look at the whole process. So what I was explaining earlier is when, when we had, uh, you know, in the early days, all the aluminum parts would be acid ash, nalodyne, and washed in the washroom down there by hand. And then you prime them. You know, you think about laying an aluminum part on a, on a tray and shooting it with a primer gun and think about how much material you lose just, just spraying. Uh, you lose a lot of material. This is very efficient, like 98% efficient. Um, and we, we recapture our paint product at the end of the day. But it goes through all those processes for us. So it goes through rinse processes, aladine processes, the whole nine yards, as it, that crane picks it up and moves it into these different locations. Awesome, and it starts at that end, right? and we'll end at this end. Yeah, we can go down here and you can actually see the product itself. So this is the product itself, the paint product. So the parts go in there, stay for so long they come out of here and they go into these rinse cycles which rinses the excess material off which are captured in these filters over here and reprocessed and separated water goes back in here the residual product left over goes back into the tank and you so told you, us the percentage earlier it's something crazy like like 98 percent efficient i mean you you just don't lose material everything gets recaptured and put back in the tank it's that's incredible super efficient yeah and the other great thing about it is Within a matter of, you know, after going through these oven processes, I don't know exactly how long they stay in these ovens, but you can actually pull the part off, put it on an airplane, sell it, move it out the door, whatever you gotta do. Now this rack is ready to go, or? Yeah, that was always a big challenge, and how the rack went most efficiently, and then we get the right amount, you know, as many parts on it as we can. So speaking of where these parts come from, we're gonna go check that out, right? That's right. Basically, if you look over here, this is where our raw materials or sheet metal are. So we got all the aluminum and steel sheets here, and they are all four foot by 12 foot sheets. And they, you know, they either go over here to be sheared to size, or they come over here to, to Chevy and they load into the laser cutter back here. So you can load full sheets of material there and it'll feed the machine itself, cut the machine. Say if we were building this part, it would take that part, it's programmed into the system. It would figure out how many parts it can cut in that sheet most efficiently with the less amount of waste possible. And it, so this has just made our parts that much more consistent and accurate, um, just easier for the end user to put out in the field or our guys assemble an airplane. Once the parts come out of a laser machine, you know, they may have to be formed or bent or something. This is the rest of Fab Shop you see here. And on the end down there um, is the inspection for Fab Shop. Again, we have a whole other inspection section for Fab Shop. So we can stop by there and visit with those guys. My name is Tommy Kenya. I'm one of the inspectors in the Fab Shop. And these are some of the parts that we check on here. We check anywhere from these parts to bigger parts to everything that's over here on this shelf. So basically what this, what this is is a comparator. I mean, Tommy lays the parts on here. The drawings are loaded into our system. So he'll pull up that drawing attached for that part 
and this machine will look at those parts and see if it gets you know size and dimensions for each individual part. So kind of what this thing does is it has a bright light underneath and this camera up here will take a picture of it when the bright light comes on to let me know that all these are good. That's kind of how we tell what's good and what's bad. All right, so this is the 802 uh, fuselage line. It's just like fuselage line that you saw upstairs for the small airplane, just on a little bigger scale. So the airframe gets built up there in the well shop and comes down here and drops into the line right here where they start fitting the side panels, the hopper, the instrument panel, just like what you saw uh, on, on the 502 line. Come around here and get a better view. This is Roy Jones. Roy Jones is head of our paint department here at Air Tracker. Once the guys fit the skins on the fuselage up there, the inside of the serial number, they put on all the skins. On the inside of all the skins will be, uh, they'll have a serial number on it, marked for that specific airplane. So uh, that's how we keep everything together as far as what goes to which airplane. So those, those skins have been specifically fit to that fuselage frame like we talked about earlier, so they have to stay together as they go through paint. Right. right. All these aluminum parts have been e-coated, so okay. that's already e-coated. Basically took the place of the primer. So now right. it gets top coat yellow, whatever, white, in some oh, cases, green. Yeah. They also bring the fuselage frames down here, right, Roy, with the belly skins, the yeah. turtle backs on them, like what you see here. Yeah. And those get painted uh, first. You saw up in the fuselage area, they leave the fuselage area, come down to paint, get paint, and then go back over the fuselage to get okay. the put together, basically. The next area we're going on to is wings. This is where they manufacture the wings from start to finish. And along this back wall, which we'll get down there momentarily is where they build all the uh, control surfaces and uh, empennage, um, flaps, ailerons, rudders, pins, uh, all that is built there. So your wings start live as spark caps from the machine shop. They get built over a machine shop. They come over here. They take the raw spar and then put it into this fixture and build the spar assembly, which the spar assembly then, once they get finished with it, moves over here to the wing fixtures gets loaded into the wing fixtures and just like the fixtures you're going to see down here and the well fixtures you saw upstairs, they start building off of those spar assemblies. The gold plated area you see there is, is actual fuel tank bay. That's where they'll seal that. The reason they don't paint that is where the cedar will stick to the, to the material. So the next area we're leaving wings and we're going into where they build all the control surfaces. So um, your fin and rudder, elevators, stabilizers, flaps and ailerons are all built here. And as you see, each model's got its own fixture, uh, depending on which they're building. And it's just like the wing fixtures you've seen today and everything else you've seen today. It starts off with the spar assembly being built, loaded into these fixtures, and they start building off of that for each model. All right, so while we're over here, there's something that's pretty exciting behind me, probably something that Tyson's most excited about. Can you explain what's behind us here? So what's behind you is the weld fixture for the 1002 fuselage frame. So it's happening. The 1002 is happening. Yeah, yeah. So we've totally, we've totally doing a redesign on the 1002. You know, we've had a flying prototype for several years now, and we have made a decision to go back and redesign the frame from the ground up. So we're working on a brand new prototype frame, as you see right here. That's the front section for it and the well fixture uh, for the 1002. And someday, you know, what you saw in the other lines, this will be the 1002 fuselage. The frame will be built in the well shop and roll down here just like what you see on the other lines. Two this slots. will become the 1002 line right here. This will here. become the 1002 line right here. Awesome. And ultimately it'll be 1002 final assembly in the front of this building. Yep. Wow. It's wild because this is huge standing next to it. It is. It is huge. It's going to be a big airplane. Uh, you know, tailored to the firefighting industry. But as we all know, the uh, we will be, somebody will be crop dusting this thing and slinging fertilizer for sure. I'm sure. So we've seen the wings, we've seen the laser cutter, paint. You've seen all the lines, you've seen yep. wings, you've seen the, the, where we build the control surfaces. Now let's take a walk over to Machine Shop and get you guys a, a, how things are built over in Machine Shop. Sounds great. So this is our FAA uh, repair station here at Air Tractor. This is where we fix wreck damage. Uh, this is where we do the spar modification. Um, when an airplane hits its life limit on spars, this is where the wings come. The airplane comes here, the wings come here. This is a set that's fixing to be done. It's timed out. So we will drill the number one, two, and three leading edge skins off, remove the old spars, install new spars. And ultimately you go from this to what you see in the background over a finished set. 
basically a brand new looking wing. Yeah, from the outside, it looked like a brand new set of wings with a brand new set of spars with full uh, full life on them. There's a lot of cool things happening in this machine shop, but something that's extra cool for us to see are the gears. Yeah, the landing gear. So the, the landing gear gets built here from from by hand, from raw material all the way out. Uh, they still once we finish, so we machine them, um, we form them here. They still get sent out for heat treat process and shot painting, but the process is really cool to watch and hopefully we catch them in, in process. Yeah, let's take a look. All right, so basically what we're doing here is taking it from a square piece of material. We're going to cut the profile shape of the landing gear spring into it. We're going to start off kind of slow because it's got to remove a lot of material. Some of it's got to be done in two passes. So about how long will it take from raw material into this machine and then back out of this machine? Right at an hour and 45 minutes, two hours. One of the issues we had with landing gear, you know, we could build landing gear and that's what we were doing from day one, but we were still land, sending out landing gear to be formed, uh, having the contour put into it. And we were having to ship that out to have it done and heat treat and uh, shot paint. So we were falling behind being able to keep up with the demand from the field and or, you know, when you're building a 170 airplane, that's a lot of landing gear. Right. So one of the things that they've done here is starting forming the gear. So we not only build the gear like you just saw, we actually bring the raw material once they finish machining it and actually form it right here and bend it to shape. So that takes a lot of the work out. And the only thing that we go out of house for now would be the heat treat process and shot painting. So it, it streamlines the process and gets us parts faster. Speaking of what you build in house, it's pretty much everything except for a couple components maybe that are coming yeah, from overseas. Know, everything is built in house. You know, I would say 85 to 90 percent is built here at Air Tractor outside of your wheels and brakes and tires, instruments, um, you know, things of that nature. But you've witnessed what all is being built here today. This has all been really cool, but is there any chance we could see some airplanes that are brand spanking new, ready to go? Absolutely. We'll walk over to Plant 4 where we store and house our airplane, getting ready for delivery. This is definitely what caught our eye as we drove in. It does. It catches everyone's <laughs> eye. So everything that you see here has been built um, and sold. It's waiting at some stage of a dealer or a customer actually coming to pick it up. The Flatline crew takes these airplanes um, and, and when they're done with them, they go in here and then this is where they get washed, touched up and ready for final delivery. We're here today with um, Mike Rhodes, our chief test pilot here at Air Traction. And maybe Mike can elaborate what he does after he receives the airplane before it goes to the customer. We'll fuel the airplane for the first time ever and do leak checks and that sort of thing. We will fill the hopper with water for the first time ever and do leak checks on that. Uh, same for the rinse tank. Um, and then we'll do, usually becomes four or five or six engine runs. Uh, we'll make idle adjustments, we'll make fuel pressure adjustments, we'll add oil, we'll service the propeller, we'll install the spinner, we'll do a dynamic balance of the propeller. Um, and the biggest part of our job is just generating a squawk list, right? If it has an on off switch we're going to turn it off and on and make sure it works um, we're also looking for stuff like fit and finish if the doors drag when you close them or if one door leaks air and the other one doesn't or something like that we're we're keeping a close eye on that kind of fit and finish uh, cosmetic kind of stuff so it'll take us three or four hours to do ground runs and work squawks and uh, make adjustments and then once that's done um, we'll install the cowling we'll install whatever skins were removed and it's ready for flight. This whole experience has been really cool and it's awesome to see the finished product. But there's also another side of Air Tractor that is kind of maybe behind the scenes. Yeah, and so that's customer service and support, which is a huge part of what we do here at Air Tractor, service after the sale. And this is totally your specialty, right? This is- That's right, I'm kind customer of, service, your... yeah, customer service manager. Awesome. And we, we're the part sales manager here as well. Awesome. I wear a few different hats. We keep the big bulky items out here. They're easy to load on trucks, put in wooden crates. This is where we do all our crating here. Uh, when we load wings, when we sell wings and load in containers, booms, landing gear, air filters. As you can see, engine mounts for almost every model up there. Wow. Um, we can walk up and down these few aisles. This, this area here is mostly our purchased items here at Air Tractor. Um, flat motors, fuel cinders, uh, you name it, we've got it here. 1340 exhaust segments. You don't see many of those anymore. <laughs> uh, so this is our main parts room here. This is where we have three salesmen who, who service our 13 dealers worldwide. So they take the orders in off of our dealer portal 
fill the orders here. They go straight out the door to the loading dock and where FedEx or UPS picks up. So is the average customer calling you up and asking you for parts or how does that work? Everything that we sell as far as parts goes through our dealer distributor network. Okay. Uh, we talk to customers all the time. Customers call with an issue or a problem and I'm their fastest route to get to an engineer to ask questions about what to do or how to repair this or that or the other. But at the end of the day, if anyone needs anything, it's going to be here. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the most important part. Right. Uh, if the dealer doesn't have it in stock, it's just a phone call away to us and we can get it from here to them directly. Jeff has literally taken his entire day to be with us here at the Air Tractor Factory and we could not be more appreciative. We're so lucky to be able to share this with you all. And where we're standing right now is something that's really special to everyone here at Air Tractor and really everyone in the ag aviation industry. Where are we, Jeff? Yep, so we're standing in front of the Leland Snow Memorial Pavilion um, that was built after Leland's passing. Um, obviously, he's one of the most influential persons in the ag industry. Uh, from building the very first thrush airplanes, the S-2As, uh, to building, designing the air tractor that you've seen all day today. If you want to, we can go up there and kind of look at the memorial and, and highlight on some of his achievements. Yeah, that'd be great. And you've been with Air Tractor for how many years? 27 years. That's yeah. insane. 27 years. So tell us a little bit about this. So this is, this is uh, his memorial, basically highlighting some of his lifetime achievements where he talks about his design of the first S-1 all the way through the S-2R. Um, like I was telling you guys earlier, you know, in the early 50s, Leland designed his first airplane. Uh, 20 something year old guy that saw the need for a single purpose built airplane in the ag industry and did it. In the 19, late 1950s, he moved his operation to Olney and, and he started Snow Aeronautical. And in 1965, Snow Aeronautical actually sold to uh, Rockwell Standard. In 1970, Rockwell Standard decided to move the operation from Texas to Georgia which where Thrush is currently is today. Uh, Leland decided to stick around here, uh, and his words were to build a uh, better, more streamlined, more useful airplane. Um, and that's what he did. That's where he started designing the air tractor. And you see in 1973, the first 300, and, and the legacy just continues on the day. We just built our 4,000th air tractor. So a huge milestone. Right. Uh, and speaks volumes of this man. Well, it's been an honor to spend the day with you, and just your history here is incredible as well. Thanks again, Jeff, for all your time. I think we're gonna head over and talk with Jim and Kristen a little bit and get some uh, frequently asked questions answered. Fantastic, I've enjoyed having you guys. It's been an extremely fun day. Uh, seeing what you guys do on the other side of the camera is amazing as well, it really <laughs> is. So thank you guys for coming out, we've truly enjoyed it. Well, thank you.